Okay, let's uh, take a seat, please. So I want to introduce you to a new uh, church family member here. She lives in California. Yeah, you can smile for everybody. Parker Lucille. Yeah. <laughs> she have anything to say? No? <laughs> All right. I just wanted to b- take, bring you up and introduce you to everybody. This is part of your family. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Sorry. We love you, baby Parker. <laughs> Aw. Good day. Good morning, everybody. I'm Carrie Reed, and I have your morning announcements. So, first off, um, it's good to see everyone this morning. Um, good to see you. It's going to be... <laughs> okay, so we have... Um, just want to encourage you to head out to the prayer wall and pick up a prayer tag and write your prayer requests on there because we love and want to pray for you. It's a privilege to pray for you. So write your prayer requests on these tags, praise reports, hang them up on the wall down there, and we will pray for you throughout the week. And so... Um, It's just a privilege to be able to pray for you guys. Um, Another opportunity for prayer, you can meet Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. downstairs in the craft room. And um, we'd love to um, have you join us as we pray for um, this morning's services, for the children's ministry um, classes downstairs. And um, even this morning we had a sweet time and, and praying for even world events that is going on right now in our world. So um, Sunday morning prayer, come join us 9 a.m. downstairs. Also, if you would like to receive weekly it, our weekly bulletin, along with all that's going on here at Horizon, um, you can connect to our Horizon app. There are instructions available on the web page at www.horizondenver.com and on the Facebook page. So um, get the Horizon app, get connected. (laughs) Also today, we have breakfast burritos in the coffee shop. And so just really wanna encourage you, get go out there, get your burrito, yummy burritos. And today's fundraiser, it goes to help the mission trip that the children's uh, ministry team, they will be taking this June to Oklahoma. So support the mission trip, get those breakfast burritos after service today. Yay! Um, All right, also, um, who of you, do you, who knows how to knit or crochet? Let's see some hands, anybody? Like Kathy, woo! All right, a few of you. How many of you would like to learn how to knit or crochet? Woo, yeah! And it's, it's for everyone. So we are starting up a knit together. Lonnie and, and Brent, yes, I see, even men can do that. This is gonna be awesome. I'd like to put my request in for a scarf or a hat. <laughs> A blanket, sweater, I don't know, anyways. Um, so we are starting a Knit Together class beginning Saturday, March 5th from 10 a.m. to noon. Learn the lost art of knitting and crocheting. If you want more information on that, go to the information booth and sign up. I can't wait, yay. So all, next um, announcement we have is the women's retreat. Um, this year's theme is It's About Time. Psalm 90, 12, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And it is up in Estes Park, April 8th through the 10th. Um, And it's $150 with a $75 non-refundable deposit. Register at the information booth before Sunday, March 27th. So ladies, I really wanna encourage you, invite you, come. We have such an awesome time. It's beautiful up there in Estes Park and we we get a fellowship, we get to pray there, um, we get to hear the word and grow together and it's just a beautiful, um, really wanna encourage you to come. Invite your friends, invite your families. It's just um, every year, it's just, <laughs> it's just amazing, and we, we, um, it's just a sweet, sweet time together. So I encourage you to sign up um, for the women's retreat this year. Um, all right, and then next we have leaders in training summer mission trip is 
um, to Oklahoma, June 18th through the 26th. Um, if you're interested, um, sign up at the information booth. The cost is $250. Register by Sunday, April 13th. Third, sorry, April 3rd. <laughs> and sign up because there's a nine week training prior to leaving. Awesome. Um, so, um, and you know, keep the mission trip in your prayers too as they're gearing up before that. Um, um, so sign up for that. Um, if, you have, if you just have questions, go to the information booth or I'm sure you could talk to Deanne. And um, what an awesome opportunity for our young people and our, um, the adults who go. And so um, just lifting them up in prayer. Um, for that. Um, if you are online and you'd like to give, you can go to www.horizondenver.com and select give. So hello to all of you watching live. And now Lonnie has a special announcement. Not special. special. It is special. Right. Steak and study. That's very special. All right. <laughs> can you guys, there we go. All right. Thank you. All right. So Two things. Uh, Steak and Study is Saturday. We've got about 12 to 15 tickets left. Um, I need all of you, church, and I, 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 we're going to pray for the, the people in Ukraine and uh, this morning as well, but be praying for the people that are coming Saturday. There are a lot of uh, people that are coming, a lot of guys that are coming that have not ever stepped into a church. So this is going to be uh, awesome, and um, we just want to pray that the Spirit of God touches their hearts and um, that this opens up conversation, and then uh, even when it comes to salvation, that uh, they make a choice here to uh, start walking with the Lord. So just please, please, please be in prayer uh, about this event, and... Um, so again, there's, there's probably 12 to 15 tickets left. You guys invite, uh, think of, pray about family members, friends, whatever, uh, to uh, invite them to come to this thing. And uh, Matt Hurd is the speaker. He's going to, I've known Matt, I don't know, three years or so. And um, he's an incredible, just believer and an incredible speaker as well. So I'm anxious to have him here, and uh, he lives down in the Springs, and so I know he's going to bring a, a message that uh, is going to touch hearts, but we just pray for the Spirit to do what the Holy Spirit does. Amen? All right, let's go ahead and pray. And um, we've got Haley and Brian here from California. That was their baby. Um, so... Um, there was a baby shower yesterday for you, and so that was awesome, and we, we kind of did a, not a baby shower. Well, I guess we can call it a baby shower with you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and pray. Oh, Father, we're so, uh, I'm excited about being here today. I'm excited, Lord, that you're here. You say where, uh, your word says that where two or more are gathered, um, Lord, and focused on you. And, and we get this opportunity to just give thanks to you and to offer our praise to you. And so, Lord, I pray that um, just your Holy Spirit, Lord, would rest upon each one of us, that you would give us uh, ears to hear and an understanding, Lord, of who you are. Father, we do want to pray for the people of the Ukraine and, and those that are suffering around the world, Lord, because that, that's not the only place there's persecution going on. Um, but we do, Lord, it just seems to be that um, this is on the front page right now. We've seen them huddled in subways. We've seen Christians gathering together and seeking you and singing worship to you. Uh, Father, protect them and watch over them. Um, my heart goes out to the children, Lord, and, and just the things that they're seeing that they shouldn't have to see. Um, so, Lord, let your grace rest upon them. Turn the enemy away. Turn them back. Let the world see, Lord, your power here and what you do. 
And so, Lord, we're free. We can gather. We don't have to worry about being bombed right now. We don't have to worry about um, walking out and having to defend ourselves, defend our families. We get this freedom to worship you this morning. And so that's what we choose to do. We want to give you thanks and give you praise for what you do and who you are. And everyone said, amen. So please stand. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. And what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, and oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not care. temptation is the trouble anywhere Jesus Savior is our refuge take it to the Lord in prayer are we weak are we weak and heavy laden come with the load of in Jesus oh what a friend oh what a friend we have in Jesus blessed Savior you have promised all our burden all our burdens you will bear may we Lord be bringing all to you in earnest prayer soon soon in glory bright and clouded face to face will be our prayer joyful praise and endless worship will be our should portion there oh what a friend oh what a friend oh what a friend we have in jesus oh what a friend oh what a friend we have in jesus Oh, what a friend. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, what a friend. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the save the Lord sing Jesus 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 how I trust him I prove him all in. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, bless 
precious Jesus. Oh, for a grace to trust him more. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Give us grace. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Give us grace to trust you more. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. For you have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. For you have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the night. don't deserve it still you give yourself away and though the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God
of grace is Jesus my redeemer there is no more for heaven now to give he is my joy my righteousness and freedom my steadfast love my deep and boundless peace to this
spirit that your kingdom comes that your will is done in our lives so Lord we just pray that we would be a people filled by your spirit and powered by your spirit would you minister to us this morning as we minister to you And we pray that you'd have your way in us. That you'd weed out things that need to be weeded out. That you'd bring the dark places of our heart, God, into the light. And that you'd soften us, that you'd make us a people, you'd make us a church that truly reflects you. long to be made into your image, Lord. So we continue to pray together that you do that, that you change us, that you shape us. Thank you for this church. Thank you for all of the ways that it reflects you in the world. How sweet it is to be in your house. We love you. We love you, Lord, and we, we pray all of these things this morning in the name of Jesus, according to the gospel at work in our hearts. Amen. Well, good morning. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Haley and Brian. That was awesome. So, th there's no question that we are in unprecedented times, regardless of what it is that's going on right now, all the different things that we're seeing, uh, just having, and again, we still haven't 
uh, gone through all the effects um, that have taken place because of the virus and the pandemic and da 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 all that stuff. On top of this, and the whole world suffered because of that. And on top of this now, you've got this uh, invasion by Russia into U the Ukraine. There are Christians around the world that are suffering incredible persecution that um, for the most part, unless we're told about it, we, we ignore praying for those that are under persecution. And I, I cannot think of a time in my life, anyway, um, where the Lord has been speaking so clear and uh, through events, through things that are going on. Um, I, I was, you know, during worship, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I have glasses. These are reading glasses. There was a point in time where every room in my house, just about, there were glasses there because that way I didn't have to take them from one room to another. And, uh, and now, um, can I have my other ones? I love these glasses, and they're red, and, uh, but you can wear them, and you just put them on when you need to put them on, and I don't have to worry about whether or not I have them or, or not in a particular room. I've got them, but we all know these help us to see things clearly, correct? Those of you that have prescriptions, I wear contacts, so... I have prescription contacts, and these just help me with the reading part to be able to see things uh, magnified a little bit. Church, the Lord right now is speaking in such a way that he's saying, look at what's going on, because what's happening in the natural, he's speaking to us in the spiritual. Be prepared. Understand what it means to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And you will not know that unless you are in his word. This isn't to make anybody feel guilty. This isn't to um, condemn anybody. I'm just telling you that if we don't look here, we don't know. And on top of that, he gives us his Holy Spirit to give us understanding. And, and I, I feel as if what God has continued to do, what Christ has continued to do, is continue to peel away um, this film, so to speak, that has, when I was looking at things and it was cloudy and I wasn't quite sure, now... He's given me clearer vision, and I hope that that's what's happening with all of you, that as you're in Bible studies, and I don't, I don't care who, you know, I used to care that if you were going to do a study, you know, it needed to be under the umbrella of the church, and da-da-da, you know what, I don't care. I do care if you're teaching false doctrine, I do care about that, but, but you know what I'm saying, the, we cannot get the word out enough. You cannot get brokenhearted enough by seeing the pictures that right now are coming across everything, not just the television, but social media. And it's like, wow, wow. When is that coming here? Because church, very likely... We're going to see those things. And, and what the Lord keeps speaking over and over and over again is this. Is you need to follow him. You need to follow and he'll show you along the way all the different things that he wants you to know and me to know. And then it's written in here. You know, in Matthew 13, I was looking this up this morning, uh, there's a number of parables in there. But one in particular was about 
the, the, the pearl of great price. That, that the person sold everything that they had for that pearl. Church, he's, he is that. He is that to us. And so, it, it, again, it's not that we can't have things or be entertained by things. It's not that. It's that how I live my life has to reflect him, not me. So when I look at this event Saturday, I've invited probably 10 guys that are not saved. And some are pretty radical non-believers. I love this. And I didn't go and say, hey, you want to come to the stake and study? He just heard the conversations going on, and he's like, so can I bring my girlfriend? No, it's a men's event. Do I have to watch my language? You're just, you're just trying to irritate me, aren't you? And he, and he was just joking along, and then finally, he's like, I want to go. I want to go. He goes, what's the dress? And I, he's in a hoodie and jeans, and I said, that's your dress. He goes, oh, I'm not going like this. I'm going to wear a coat. And I said, well, you'll be overdressed, but that's cool. You guys, we have no idea who God not only is going to bring to, to, to the event on Saturday, but who is he going to bring into your life today, this week? And, and I'm just saying we've got to be aware of this. What is God beginning to speak to us? So when Haley goes... Lord, let your spirit rest on us. Look, give us ears to hear. Lord, give us ears to hear, please. Like, send us. Because we know, we know we're seeing all of these events right now. And, and it's not to cause fear, although that's what the enemy wants to do. But I believe the Lord's going, look, look. My redemption is near. My kingdom is near. Pay attention. So we're going to be back in 2 Timothy. We, we did an introduction. I did an introduction last week um, in 2 Timothy. And we're going to start into chapter 1. I, I titled the message today, Ministry. The reality of ministry. And, and if you talk to anyone here that, that has been involved in ministry, it, they're going to tell you it's, it's not an easy thing to do. It may seem like it's easy. It may seem like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get involved. I can't wait to come on staff. Yeah, you know what? It's not what you think. It's not what you think. I, I had somebody the other day, a couple of weeks ago actually, um, a gentleman that's retired, and he called and he said, um, you know, so I'm getting asked to come on staff at a church. I, I'm just wondering what your opinion is. Don't. That's my opinion. Don't. It'll kill you. He goes, what do you mean? I said, just understand, if you have the... Um, slightest intention that you're going to minister and that's all you're going to be doing, I will tell you right now it doesn't work that way. Your support staff and you, have, you follow what the senior pastor, what his vision is or what your board of elders do or whatever the situation is and you have to fall in line. He goes, well, you know, what's interesting is, is he says, the, my friend who said you know, this would be a good time. He's actually going to be leaving. I said, so you're getting a new pastor? And he goes, yeah. And I said, what's his vision? I, I don't know. And you're going to go on staff with this. Good luck. Now, again, I'm not, please don't hear 
that I'm sour on ministry. It's not that. It's be led by the Lord, though, because our concept of what we think something is, most of the time, if not all of, all of the time, it's not what we expected it to be at all. So Timothy has walked with Paul. He was saved under Paul's ministry. Paul loves him. He calls him a son. He, he calls him a dear one. I think of you all the time. Timothy, I, I know about your tears. I, I know how you struggled when I left you. I, I know about your anxieties. I know about your fears. By the way, take a little wine, not take a little grape juice. Take a little wine for your stomach to settle it. That's just for the people that go, oh my gosh, we shouldn't have any alcohol. Shame on you. Read the scripture. That's all my commentary on that. Anyway. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm telling you, we are so crazy about how we've been deceived about things. I, I, I say this to you because Paul is writing to him, and, and he's, this is the reality. It really is. Here's the reality here, because I know you're looking at me, and, and I showed a picture last week of a prison that would be similar to what Paul was in. It had a hole in the ceiling. It was a cave. It had a hole. It was a latrine. Friends had to bring food to him. It was, there was no heating. It was cold. He was lonely. He goes, I got put before Nero at my first defense. Everybody had left me. Some had gone off to other places to do ministry. Some went back to the world. Now, I, I, this has been such a profound change for me to look at Paul right now and see that commitment to eternal life, not to the present life. But if I'm Timothy or any of the other guys that are looking at Paul and going, this is what it means to follow Christ? You're going to end up like this? Yeah, no thanks. I I'm not willing to do that. It's like saying, you know what, church, we've got an opportunity to send a team to the Ukraine right now to help with the Christians there. There'd be some that would immediately go, I'll go, I'll be there. Absolutely. If God's opening, I mean, I'll pray about it, but if the Lord's opening that door, I'll go. And then there'd be others that go, are you serious? Nah. -uh. No. I want to stay here. I like this. I don't, I don't want to have to go through the fear. I don't want to have to go through the struggles. Church, the Lord's opening up doors right now, and, and it's going to be fearful. But it's by His Spirit that we're going to enter in and do what He's called us to do. So the question becomes, what is that exactly? So I want you to look at verse 1 here of 2 Timothy. A very familiar uh, opening for Paul. Salutation, if you will. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Not by man. The church didn't nominate me. I didn't nominate myself. I, I wasn't put into this position by some committee or anything like that. It's because this is where God has called me to. This is God's will for me. According to the promise of life. I am called to preach the gospel. Paul says, because of the promise of eternal life. 
because of who he is, which is in Christ Jesus. So it's almost this reminder to Timothy, dude, don't forget what we're for. Don't, don't forget what we do. God's call on every single one of us is what? And I'm saying that because to each one of us, it's different. What's the will of God for you? What has he called you to? Who has he called you to? You know, um, for the last couple of weeks, I've been getting a phone call from Burkdale, and those of you that have been here, two years ago, before the whole craziness started, uh, it's a nursing home just up here on Lowell. It's for Alzheimer's patients. And, um, and, and when COVID hit, they shut everything down. You all know the story about the nursing homes and things like that. Well, anyway, the director's been calling. And his first call to me was, I'd love you to come and do an Ash Wednesday service. Meaning, come and do ashes. I called him back. I said, I... I don't do ashes. You, you're probably thinking I'm a priest. I'm not. I am, but I'm not what you think. You probably need to call a Catholic priest or, you know, a Lutheran or whatever that, that does those things. So then I hear from him again. And he says, you know what? Would you consider coming and doing this again? I said, well, let me tell you, I'm not vaccinated. So in case you ever wondered, I'm not. I said, um, he says, that's okay. Okay, it wasn't okay, but it's okay. But it wasn't, okay, whatever. And uh, he goes, but if, do you mind to get tested? And we'll do the testing, we'll do a quick test, and, and uh, you know, if things are fine, then you can come on. I said, I don't, that's fine, I don't care. And he goes, oh, that would be awesome. I said, well, let me go up, which I'm going to go up this Tuesday. Um, uh, taking Donna, I asked Dave and Kathy um, Moeller to come with us, and we'll see. But I'm going to tell you, church, I'm, I'm scared. And I'm going to tell you why I'm scared. Sorry. The hardest thing for me, personally, is dealing with children and dealing with the elderly, seeing them hurt. And, who? I'm just wondering, how many are there that were there two years ago? Probably not many. And, and we had all built relationship with some of these people that we saw week to week. They didn't remember us because it was like 50 first dates. Every time you win, it's like, how do you know my name? Well, by the way, I don't know if this will happen this time, but I was really like hot with all the 80 women, 80-year-old women. Oh, my gosh. I got invited to their room. I got, you know, I'd point to Donna and go, that's my wife. I don't care. <laughs> so I don't know if that'll happen this time. It didn't, you know, it's one of those things where, okay, it's one thing if some hot young, go, oh my gosh, you look good for 66 years old. When an 80-year-old says that, yeah, okay, <laughs> whatever. But I got to tell you, there's an apprehension in my heart about this. Oh, gosh. So I, I need to. Uh, but God's opening the door. So now there's a choice. Do you go with anticipation of this is going to break my heart and the Lord's going yep that's what I want 
That's what I want. I don't know why. This guy's like a dog with a bone. He won't leave us alone in calling. And, and okay, Lord. And, and Don and I have talked about this. It's like, I don't know what God's going to show in the process of this, but I know he's going to show something because that's what he does. So here's Paul going, Timothy, you've got to fill my sandals, buddy. You, you've got to walk and continue on with the gospel. The things that were poured into you by your, your grandmother and by your mother. And I'm kind of getting ahead here, but understand, Paul understands at this point what he's called to do. Do, do you remember, and I'll... Um, you guys have, will have to jump ahead to Acts uh, 26. If you can bring up that slide. Remember he sends Ananias to go to Paul after Paul has this encounter on the road to Damascus and Ananias is freaked out. He's like, do you, wait a minute, you sure you got the right address and the right person? Because this guy kills people. He hates Christians. No, I'm sending you to him. Yeah, but really? And, and God bless Ananias. You know, you don't hear much about him other than he was obedient. But he still objected to the Lord to go, I'm not a, you're, please don't send me. Okay, please, it'd be easier if I didn't go. Send somebody else. Nope. You. I chose you. By the will of God, Ananias goes. So, I have, he says, you tell Paul this. I have appeared to you for this purpose. Isn't that what we want to know is what our purpose is? Right? As a believer in Christ, Lord, what do you have? What's my purpose here? Here's Paul's purpose. To make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and the things which I will reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified in me. Called by God. Now you go back to Acts 9, and this is, I'm not bringing this one up, because Paul addresses King Agrippa and Festus when he gives this testimony, so to speak, here in Acts 26. But on the, when Ananias goes to him now in Acts 9, he says, here's what I want you to tell him. He's a chosen vessel of mine. This is in verse 15. To bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must, what? Suffer. Hmm. Seriously? Can you leave that part out? I, you know... I don't know if I object much to appearing before those that are of nobility or those that are of reputation, but I don't know about this other part. I will show him, you need to tell him how many things he's going to suffer for my namesake. And did he? You bet he did. He was thrown out of cities, he was beaten with rods. He was thrown in prison. He had stones thrown at him. His friends thought he was dead. Yeah. For the suffering of Christ, to follow Christ. And when he, again, back in Acts 26, when he appears, when he gets an audience with Agrippa and Festus, it's like, you guys... This is what he's called me to do. This is my purpose. So when I go back here 
to him saying, this is who I am. I was by myself at the end. I can imagine it, there's got to be doubt with Timothy going, I don't know if I can hang with you, man. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. But then Paul says this in chapter 4 of 2 Timothy, verse 17, and you can take a look at this. But the Lord stood with me. Who strengthened him? The Lord. Do you not think that these Christians, I, I guarantee you, church, these Christians that are, you, that are in Ukraine right now, we're going to hear incredible testimonies of what God does. We're going to stand back amazed because God's going to reveal himself in a way that they've never seen him before. Is that enough to move us? Is that enough to stir us? You know, we thought when 9-11 happened that, and the churches filled up, oh my gosh, God, this, this is going to bring it. No, di didn't shake us, didn't. Some came back to church. Others were like, okay, I think it's good. I think it's clear. I can go back out. Is this enough? So, Paul says, at my first defense, there was no one here. Everyone forsook me. But you know what? The Lord was there. He stood with me. He strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me because I had no strength. You talk about weak, that was me. I had nothing. There was no one even there to be able to testify about how good of a guy I was. Or to try to defend me. But the message here might be preached fully through me that all the Gentiles might hear. Now, here comes Timothy, who had pastored Ephesus. Ephesus has fallen apart. There's all these heretics that are going on, uh, that are causing problems in Ephesus. This is a nightmare. So here's Timothy going, glad I'm out of Ephesus. And he's on his way to Paul. We're not told if he ever was able to reach Paul, even though Paul gives instructions. Make sure you bring my cloak and bring my scrolls and parchments. We don't know if he got there in time. Paul very well may have been dead by that point. So, you know, Timothy comes into this. This is what he's walking into. But Paul leaves this letter. He warns Timothy about people. So go to chapter 4, 2 Timothy 4, verse 14. In, in his first letter to Timothy, he talks about two guys, Hymenius and Alexander. In his second letter, this is the warning he gives to Timothy. Alexander the coppersmith, how'd you like to be mentioned in Scripture here? Not for good, but this guy here, stay away from him. He did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. You also must beware of him. He has greatly resisted our words. This isn't somebody that's just talking bad, just talking smack. This guy's done incredible harm. Enough so that when young Timothy comes, and again, Timothy's probably in his early 30s at this point, that Paul's writing him and saying, stay away from this guy. He's not a good guy. You will find people as you minister 
to others that are enemies of the gospel. I'm sure we will have enemies of the gospel here Saturday. Like, what are you going to tell me? I'm just here because you, you, you guys, some of you guys that have invited people in the past may have been, I'm only here because of you. And that sucked. I'm never coming back. Th there are just enemies to the gospel, church. There are enemies to the ministry. And they'll do everything and anything. And some, you know what? Jude says, they're already in your midst. That could mean any one of us. But our reliance isn't on the pastor. It's not rely it, our reliance is not on an individual. Our reliance is on the Lord. But yeah, do we give warnings? Absolutely, you give a warning. Those that think, oh, you're not supposed to judge. Hmm, let's see. I think, I don't know. Call me stupid, but I think Paul's judging here. Yeah, of course, of course. There will be enemies of the gospel. Don't be surprised. A again, turn to chapter 4, 2 Timothy 4, look at verse 9. Be diligent to come to me quickly. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark, bring him with you, for he's useful to me for ministry. Tychicus I've sent to Ephesus. And then here, this is what I need from you, bro. Bring the cloak, bring the parchments, bring the scrolls, the books. As I've said before, keep this in mind. Second Timothy is like Paul's last will and testament here. And he wants to share with Timothy encouragement, warning, what he's going to be facing, what it takes to walk with Jesus. Church, that's all you and I can do. We can read God's word and go... Well, somebody told me I wasn't, when I came to Christ, they said, you're not going to have to suffer. You're not going to have to go through struggles. Really? I don't know what Bible you read. I don't know what Jesus you were told about. But here's what I read in his word. I've walked with the Lord long enough to know about suffering. I've seen that. I've seen enemies of the gospel. I, I, I've seen God do incredible things. And I would never, ever give that up. So, he tells Timothy, he charges Timothy, don't forget who you are. Don't forget what God has willed for you. Don't forget what God has called you to. Church, every single one of you in here, what is that calling? What is God's will? What has he put on your heart that, that he's, he, he, you know? This isn't even about, I've got to search this out. No, there's something on my heart, and you may have ignored it. It doesn't take away from what he's called you to do. What's that calling? So, again, look at verse 6 here in chapter 1 of 2 Timothy. I remind you, stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hand. Timothy, do you remember when I laid hands on you and prayed? And the, and the Lord, what the Lord did? Church, if you need that, we will lay hands on you. We will pray for you. But this isn't for you to go, well, let me tell you what my gift is. 
And, and by the way, Pastor Lonnie laid hands on me. Yeah, if I lay hands on you, it's... No, I will lay hands on you to pray for God's will to be done. But, but not to put you up on a pedestal to go, do you know who I am? That, that's, God doesn't do that. The Lord doesn't do that. You know, we were, Brian and Haley, it was a group of us last night, we were talking. I won't reveal Haley's age, but let me say this. Donna and I met her when she was 17 years old. We've known her, uh, well, I'm going to probably give it away anyway, almost half her life. We've seen her, we saw her when she was just a teenager and met her. She, she really is a spiritual daughter to us. And she's come out to do, you know, women's retreats, and she's played at the church a number of times, et cetera, et cetera. And then she meets Brian. And then they get married. They had their whole, this is what we're going to do. And then they had a baby. And now it's, this is what God's willed for us. And we're still going to do what God's called us to do. That's not going to stop. And what's so awesome about this, again, we were, Donna and I were talking this morning about this. It's so cool to be able to go, hey, family, this is their child. This is, this is, this is one of us. This is part of the body of Christ. This is part of our family. It's part of your family. We've got to be able to look at each other as brothers and sisters and encourage and at times correct and at times forgive and love each other, have grace for each other, have mercy for each other. Because I'll tell you what, all the crap is going to fall off if we have to gather together and huddle together. It, this isn't going to be where you're going, you know, I don't know if he plays the guitar all that well. You know, I don't really like the worship over here. I guarantee you it's not going to matter who's worshiping. We want to worship God, right? That's who we're going to seek because he's our only answer. And church, the urgency of all of this is what is going on right now. And I, I, again, I cannot say this any stronger, the Lord is calling to us, come, come to me, he's saying. I know you're burdened. I'll take care of that for you. Look at verse 14 in chapter 1. Not only stir up the gift, do you remember that, Timothy? Remember when we remember what the Lord spoke? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I remember. Okay, 14. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. This letter is not just to Timothy, church. It's to the church. It's to all of us. Stir up those gifts. What is that passion that the Lord, that light that was like so bright when you came to Christ and you just went, man, Lord, I'll do whatever. Like, whatever. I'll, I'll do it. And then all of a sudden we get civilized and it's like, mm, Tuesday, 2 o'clock, can we have an appointment? Wow. Wow. How far we have fallen. Preach the word is what he says in the second verse of chapter 4. So Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. This is in, 
and you don't need to turn there. This, he writes this in the very first letter in verse uh, 21 of chapter 6. An apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. All right, that's the greeting. We got five minutes. Let's go to the second verse. You know what? Sorry, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to do all this. I'll I'll save this next week. Matt Hurd's teaching. I'm gonna save this for the following for the following week. But here's what I want to challenge you to do. I, I want to challenge you to ask the Lord, what is the call that you've put on my life? Lord, reveal it to me. Speak to me. What, what is that? What does that look like? Because sometimes it, it takes being asked that question before you stop and think about it and go, you know what, I forgot about that. I forgot about the fact that I had this call and people prayed for me and they laid hands on me and I, I forgot that. You know, I used to pray a lot. But, you know, I don't pray a lot right now. Pray. Pray. I, I used to study God's Word. I used to be in His Word daily. You know what? I haven't. I haven't done that. Not because he goes, you know, that makes me really happy that you're reading the Bible. No, 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 no. This is about getting to know him. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a message on um, Good Friday about what Jesus means when he says, follow me. Because, you know, you guys, every place that you see this, you know, when Mama Zebedee goes to Jesus and says, you know, my two really cute little, they're just perfect little boys over here, can they sit at your right hand? And Jesus says, you know what, are they going to be able to go through the baptism that I'm going to go through? Are they going to be able to go through all of those things? Oh, of course, yes. You're not there yet. You will be, but you're not there yet. This is why, and one of the things we're, we're learning going through our um, equip class here on the upper room, this is why Peter goes, oh my gosh, you can't wash my feet. Peter, if you don't get this, you can't follow me. You can't. You don't understand what it means to follow Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, church, we don't know what it means to follow Jesus, all of us. What that walk means. What that humility means. And it's not that everything's perfect, because it's not. But He is. And He does incredible things. So... I'm going to read to you what I wrote at the end of the message today. There's a spiritual discipline that needs to be developed and used. Again, the question needs to be asked, with all the spiritual and natural gifts God's given, what are you called to do by the will of God? If you want to surrender and make yourself available to God and you want more, stand. Stand. I, that's not a rhetorical. Stand if you want that. Let's pray for that. <laughs> You guys, come on up and let, let, let me pray for us here. Because I'm going to tell you something. Don't do this 
if you're not serious about this because the Lord will use you, I promise you. He's going to send you into places that are going to break your heart. He's going to send you into places that are going to be really difficult. He's going to send you into places where you're going to see his power like you've never seen it before. And again, let me just commit to you, be praying for the saints that are going through difficulties and fear and all of that. There, there was a, a grandfather. I saw a picture of a grandfather who, who showed up in his World War II uniform from the Ukraine, and, and, and he said, I'm doing this for my grandchildren. We have to show. This has to be passed on. But if we don't have it, we've got nothing to pass on, Right? So, Father, I pray for every person, Lord, whose heart is set on you, who is standing now to say, I want more. I want more of your spirit, Lord. I, I want you to use me. Don't, don't let me turn to the right or to the left, Lord. Let me see you. Let me see where you're directing me. Let me understand and hold true to the call that you have for me. So I thank you, Lord, for this. I pray, Lord, again, that we be found worthy, Lord, because we are obedient to you. We don't want any attention on us. We don't want the glory, Lord, we don't want um, the recognition. Lord, even this, again, this coming Saturday when we have this opportunity to serve 125 men, that we serve them as unto you. And we pray for each one of them. And Lord, I pray you've got a small army here that can be sent. And we want to be used by you, Lord, in whatever way, according to your will. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Of the world by darkness 
to, but um, I, I believe the Lord is speaking to say, He already told you about your calling when you gave your life to Him, and you've forgotten. You've forgotten that, and He's going, it's still there. The calling hasn't changed. So again, if, if that's you, do business with the Lord. He'll show you, he'll guide you, he'll direct you. Church, he's prepping us. He's revealing himself more and more and more. Let us have eyes to see. Amen? Amen. All right. Thank you.